So before I start creating the actual geometry of the walls, I will add a few parameters to our interface because I know I will be channel referencing many of these values. So I'm going to click on Edit Parameter Interface and I will create a new folder. I will call this Walls. And I could copy the parameters I've been using for the columns. They will be very similar. So instead of calling this width, I will call it thickness. And I will move this folder upward to have it just below the columns. And I'll, I just notice I will change the name of this label to thickness with two S. Same for the channel name. And let's create a default for the wall thickness. I think 0.4 is OK. Actually, the wall being the same thickness of, of the column is fine. I will duplicate the group parameter. copy it into the walls folder so the label can stay the same but the default I will change to walls and the channel name will be called walls group I will also change the channel name for the column group. Forgot to, to change this name. This one is going to be column groups. And I will also copy the color and with I will add it to the to the walls group. Change the channel name to walls color and click on accept so now that these parameters are ready let's start building the actual geometry and for that I'm also going to use the grid I'm going to be reusing this grid geometry and let's recap what we're going to do I can untemplate now the transform node and hide this viewport grid. So what I'm going to do is use this external edges to copy the wall geometry. So first of all, I won't need the entire faces. I just need the edges. So if you look now, we have complete faces. Another thing that I will do is I will delete or remove the center edges because I only know I, I only need the external ones now this could be achieved with VEX but again for the purpose of this uh, particular video I'm going to use another approach we can then replace this part of the tree with VEX nodes but for now I'm going to use a very nice node that's called create line and connect it to the grid. So now we don't have the faces, they were deleted, and we only have the edges. To delete the internal edges, I will create a group and call this group kill. And I will select by bounding regions. So I will click in enable bounding regions, make sure bounding box is active. And I could channel reference the grid width. 
and paste into the box dimensions. Same for the depth of the grid. I can copy the parameter and channel reference to the box C size. Now we have a bounding box that is exactly the size of the grid, so it will select the entire edges. So we can multiply this box by 0.99. Same for the other dimension. We can multiply it by 0.99. So it's a bit smaller than the actual grid. And enable include partially contained entities. So notice how now only the center edges are selected. And we can use a blast node to blast only this group. So now we're left only with the exterior edges. I will click here on the display points just to see this better. So to create the actual thickness or volume of the wall, I will iterate on each of these edges and create a few extrusions. To do that, I will need to use a for loop So I will select for each primitive. And you will notice here on the block begin, we have fetch piece or point. And on the block end, we have piece elements primitives. So say, for example, we were to transform inside this loop say the scale of a primitive by its center. You would, you would notice that every one of the primitives is scaled individually because of the loop. If we were to copy this transform and apply it to the entire geometry, the effect would be completely different. So this is why I'm going to work inside the for loop to create all these changes on the indiv individual edges. OK, so I will delete the transform now. And I will use a very special node called polyframe to create tangents or actually nor normals tangent to this line. To explain better, I will create a visualizer. So I will scroll down here to the vis uh, visualization button. I will right click here and click on the plus button to create a new marker. And the marker will be to visualize a normal, which is capital N. So it will change the name and the label to capital N, as well as the attribute. And make sure this is a vector. Now, by default, the polyframe will create a normal. But what I want to do, I will check this off. I will turn off the normal name and will change the tangent name to N. So what this will do is create a normal, again, tangent to this edge. So the reason I want to do this is I will uh, later scale these points on the normal direction with a peak node. So let's create a peak. We will also connect this inside the for loop and change the value of the peak, say, to minus 0.2. Now, the problem currently is both normals are pointing in the same direction. So even if we scale it down, 
uh, it will appear to be moving rather than scaling. So there's a quick fix I need to do. And I will have to change the direction of one of the normals. That, again, I will use my point old node. I will make sure to connect it inside the for loop. And I only want this node to operate on a single point, point number zero. So if we take a look at, at the individual lines, you will notice how each line is made of only two points. So I'll turn here the point uh, display point numbers and you will notice how we have point number zero and point number one. And point number zero is pointing outward, the normal, and the normal for point number one is pointing inward. So we need both normals to be pointing inward in order to the peak to work as we expect. This is why on the point node, I'm adding the number zero to the group just to operate on this single point. So what I'm going to do is scroll down to where the keep normal attribute is. I'm going to change that to add normal. And I'm going to negate this vector. So I'm going to add a minus sign to uh, each one of the parameters, x, y, and z. To invert this normal and have it, point, have it pointing inward. So we can see it now in the viewport with our visualizer. Now the peak node should, uh, should work as expected. So if we change the distance, we will in effect be scaling down this line. So let's view the entire model. And to define how much the peak is, uh, how much the peak is traveling, I will channel reference the column width to the peak distance and divide it by two. So let me template the columns just to see what's happening. So now notice how the lines are touching both sides of the columns. And if we change the column width, the size of these lines will also change. So now to actually create the volume of the walls, we can add another poly extrude. And remember how the poly extrude needs uh, normals to know exactly in which direction the extrusion will be made. So we will need to add normals again with my point old node. And add a normal pointing in the positive y direction. So here we see the normals now in the viewport. We can now extrude in the point normal direction and use an existing normal. Perfect. So we can add this height value to our interface Let's click here on the gear icon, edit parameter interface, add a float value inside our wall folder, label it height, and give it a default of one meter. 
also make sure to change the channel name to wall height and give it a range probably from 0.1 to 4 meters also one thing I forgot to do is change the folder style for the walls to simple just to keep it the same as the rest and I'll click here and accept so now we have our height parameter so let us channel reference it to the extrusion distance and let's check if it's work it's working fine now so for now let's turn off the visualizer let's also turn off uh, display point numbers and we will use another poly extrude to extrude this plane outward and give it some thickness and for this we will use of course the wall thickness parameter so we will copy this value and paste it on the distance as a relative reference now I'm going to extrude on, bo on both sides so I will divide this value by 2 make sure to generate a back face and since I'm going to extrude only one of these faces make sure to click uh, create back group so next time we add a poly extrude we can operate only on that group the back face so again we could extrude half of the width so I'm going to copy this parameter channel reference it again on the distance and divide this value by 2 so there we have it now the walls are ready we can now merge the walls with the rest of the geometry actually we already have a merge node up here so let's check that everything is working fine so here we have the walls I will just add two more things the wall groups the wall colors and actually I will also add the normals as we did with the columns so first things first let, let's add a group node will channel reference the parameter from the interface into the group name then we'll add a color node and channel reference its corresponding parameter from the interface and finally add a normal just as we did with columns and slabs with a cusp angle of 20 perfect